Welcome everyone to this powerful interview. My name's Scott Weddle. I am the founder of the FitPro Journey and the visionary leader from FitPros. And I'm here with the one and only coach Darren Casey, who I believe is the founder of The Rapid Method. So before we go on, I just want to set the intention for the whole interview for everyone here. Um, the intention behind these interviews is to actually basically open people's eyes to what's possible for themselves because in life and in business, they open people's eyes to the, the whole package here because what most people do is they grow up, they take on beliefs, habits and behaviors from family members and they take that through their life and then they create the same reality. So they're caught in society's trap and society's cage. And what I want to, these interviews to do is to be a catalyst for people. So we are going to deliver so much value that you're going to reach inside of yourself to then go, fuck, I can do that. This is what's possible for me. And this is what I want. This is the, the way I want to move forward in my life. So yeah, Darren, welcome, mate. And what I want you to do first is just to tell everyone your story, mate, and just inspire everyone. Tell everyone where you've came from and what you've achieved in your life, mate, because I am 100% inspired from what you've done, mate. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate that. I've got this fly trying to eat me one second. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I'm in Bali as yeah. well. Flies so, everywhere. yeah, in the UK, in Manchester, here right now. <laughs> Oh man, flies in there, yeah. So here I am, yeah, in Manchester in the UK, and I run my business for about three years, 100% online now, maybe closer to four years. But yeah, three or four years ago, I was just hustling. Uh, at that time, I had a six location boot camp. I um, was hustling away. I had 211 clients that I was taking care of in these groups. Um, I'm doing everything myself, basically, and I was just like, <sighs> fed up of having no freedom, fed up of following this route to what I didn't even realize wasn't even aligned with what I really wanted, what I really valued, which was my freedom, traveling, hanging out with my girlfriend, having a dog that I, I wanted to just play with and just have some fun with and just creating um, <laughs> control over my lifestyle. That was really what I wanted. I wanted control. I didn't want to wake up and rush to clients and um, take care of them before I was taking care of myself. So... That was really what um, prompted me to t kind of transition online, although it was something that I'd wanted to do for about eight years. Um, you know, <clears throat> my clients are all mostly in the States, and this is because my journey started out there, you know, in personal development and hiring mentors, flying out to the States, because in the UK, I couldn't find anybody who was doing what I wanted to do, and I had to kind of lay a new path that, in the, in the UK, especially, it wasn't really being done. You know, especially personal development, investing in mindset, investing in um, in compressing. Really, where I started my journey, which was flying over the pond to the USA in San Diego, in all these different places, and really learning and spending all the money I had, and even money I didn't have, and trying to figure this puzzle out. So then, that opened up opportunities that I wasn't really at the time anticipating or aware of. It got me in front of a few of my um, ideal clients and I then put, I then gave myself six weeks where I said, right, when I get back to the UK, I'm not going to take on any more one-on-one -on -one clients. I'm actually going to cancel every single client I've got and give them an insight of this is where I'm going in six weeks. I'm going hundred percent online. If you'd like to follow this this path, this is where you need to go. If not, have a nice day. And um, that was me. That's really where I got to where I am now by making, forcing myself to take drastic action, really. Yeah. Now, that is a great example of what it takes to actually get to the level of success you truly want. Now, people in my eyes don't understand the, the importance of investing in, this, in themselves with time, money, and effort. So, like... Do you think, Darren, you would, you would be where you are now if you didn't invest in yourself? Well, it's, it's interesting because for eight years, I protected the cost of change, <laughs> which basically meant my ego said, I don't know how to start this out. I don't know how to do this. I already was hitting six figures, selling my soul, right, training everybody. So I thought, cool, I'll just you know, continue to learn this myself. So for eight years, I was learning enough guys like Ryan Lee buying the cheap stuff. You know, his, his program was all good and, and, and well. And all these kind of digital fitness um, gurus who 
and Ryan's a good friend of mine now, but all these guys who were giving some great content out, you know, people who was following, I realized that two things, I didn't have the, the space to dive in and actually follow through with this stuff because I was burnt out, I was tired, I didn't have the focus, and I wasn't invested in specific outcomes, I was just absorbing information, getting overwhelmed and doing nothing. So this is where I realized, you know, I need to do what I'm expecting my clients to do, you know, I'm expecting them to invest in to get an outcome, and that's what I needed to do. So I call this the revelation where I realized there was a lost opportunity cost. So for every month that I was protecting um, the few thousand dollars it was, it was to take me to go and, and jump into a two-day event or something and pay for flights and hotels, I realized that that was um, not a cost. It, was, it, it wasn't costing me any money. It was giving me access to income that I couldn't reach. So that's really where I re that's how I interpreted investing in myself. It was how do I access this income that's available and how do I reduce the opportunity cost, which it's going to take me to get there. So yes. the cost of lost opportunity was much more greater than the cost of change. That's really where I um, accepted that I can't do this by myself. Yeah. So look, just from your slight switch in mindset, took you to the States and, and it took you, started you on a journey to, of personal development and actual real business growth. So would you say that you actually made a decision to stop being the student and to stop being the student and actually become the teacher? The step away from the learning and the absorbing and the procrastinating and oh, I need to learn more, I need to learn more into the actual teacher and actually start doing things rather than just learning. So I call that switching from learning to earning. So that's absolutely amazing like feedback that when you just switch your mindset and you just go all in with it, you're, you're, you are like going to, going to go to the next level. It's inevitable if you go forward with full belief. But, yeah. but for yeah, it's kind of, um, just, just a touch of that, Sky, it was kind of looking at the results I had and saying, okay, for eight years I've been trying to launch an online business and I've not made a bean. Yep. So what do I need to do? Yep. I needed to get a lot more support. I needed to start asking for help and paying for help. Yep. And as soon as I made that decision that I need to pay, to learn this stuff quick. That was really when everything changed. Yeah, awesome, man. So like for people looking to actually make the same transition you've done and I've done, obviously the biggest question that comes up um, is like where and how do I start? So could you give everyone like an overview of like, where, especially for, for um, guys that are interested in, in serving at a higher level and charging a premium price for their packages, could you give people an overview of where you would guide someone to start on the journey? Yeah, this is quite controversial because what I've found, especially in the last year since I've been teaching early fit pros, this, this um, process of charging higher fees is most people um, in the fitness industry right now are not, uh, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the value to offer the marketplace to demand high fees. They're wondering why they're not making um, you know, 20 grand a year face-to-face -face training. And they want to charge people two, three, four, five, 10 K in online training before they've mastered the art of delivering value face-to-face. -face. So the first thing I would look at is what skills do you need to acquire to get or to deliver the level of value that demands high fees? And usually that means you have to become an expert in a specific outcome-based process or program. So are you going to become an expert for diabetics? Are you going to become an expert for you know, pregnant ladies who want to get the body back? Is it, um, is it you know, for obese guys who are busy who you know, need this kind of stuff taken care of? So really ensure that you're an expert. Ensure that you're somebody you can deliver at, at a high level. So once you've got that out of the way, I just wanted to touch on that because I know that the marketplace is... Yeah. He's selling marketing, you know, you've got Joe Bloggs who is not really sure on how to put a workout plan together and he's trying to sell 5K programs online and he's, work and he's concerned why this marketing guru's tactics are not working, right? So, <laughs> so you have to be good. So the second thing you have to be good. The second thing is um, you've got to focus on your own self-image. So your beliefs, how you see yourself, how to actually um, overcome certain areas of your life that's stopping you taking action and trusting yourself. E.g., a good one that we started off with, Scott, which was um, 
the beliefs that you've acquired that are not yours and yes. how to overcome um, hurdles which are stopping you moving forwards. And you know, like you say, it's from your family, it's from your, you know, the media, it's from your, your upbringing. Yep. And one of, the, one of the barriers I see with people getting started and taking that first step to invest in themselves, it is their wife or the partner's fears. And they say, I need to ask my wife's permission or I need to check with my wife and things like that. And they don't trust themselves. They don't want to bet on themselves. So that the, the, the first thing that I see that fit pros really need to help them to take care of to move forward, it's working on themselves image, looking <laughs> at their beliefs and why they are where they're at and what do they need to change in order to move forward. And that's usually um, self-image, self-worth and betting on yourself. You know, you're, you're better on everything else, but are you prepared to bet on yourself? So that's the first couple of tips I'd say that's probably quite controversial. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah. It's, it's all mindset, mate. If you've got, if you align your mindset to your goal, then you will receive that goal 100%. But obviously, could you go a little bit deeper on that and like maybe uh, yeah. explain to people how you would go about doing that? Because whenever I speak to someone about mindset, they just don't understand it and we have to go a little bit deeper. So could you go a little bit deeper and say like, if I was the, the person you were helping right now and I was just, I couldn't see that I could sell a five grand program, I was the expert. How would you explain to me, like how can I overcome these beliefs that are holding me back? How would you explain that to me? Yeah, so we have to build up some evidence in our subconscious mind around what we're able to, to do. And usually at the current level of how we see things, you know, our perception, our lens that we're currently looking through is because we've got to a certain, or we've achieved a certain um, belief or, or level of evidence of what we can do. Yep. It's like the, the story of the four-minute mile, right? They get first guy to run the, run the first four-minute mile, what happened a few Months later, four or five people did it, and it never been done before. So yeah. we have to build up um, evidence that we can sell at that level. So the way that I do it is we start off at, say, $497, $500, 500, excuse me, 500 pounds, and we build evidence that we can sell at a certain price point. And then we climb the ladder just like how I did it. I didn't start selling my programs at 12K, 30K. I started off at $1,000 or yep. uh, £1,000, $1,600 at the time. Yep. I think the exchange rates down to pounds now, so about <laughs> So you've got to start off at a level um, in your subconscious mind, which makes or builds up evidence that you can that you can do it. And then you start to get evidence, you get confident, you get to stretch your upper limiting belief, yep. and then you can start to raise your prices to a thousand dollars. And then you can say, "Wow, well, I'm selling at this level." And on the way, you, you're acquiring fresh insights on how much of an impact you're helping these people um, acquire. So then you're actually able to sell your outcomes better and really sell the pain and the problems that people are investing in, right? They're not investing in a training, they're investing in solving a problem. So that's how that momentum gets up to those kinds of levels, you know, 5K, 10K plus. Um, you know, I know that we'd like to go from charging 40 pounds a session to 5K. You might, you might be lucky and you might sell a couple of those, but when you want consistency and confidence yep. to do that week in, week out, in my experience at least, it just takes um, a learning curve of stepping up stepping up those price points and building some evidence that you can do it. Yep. Yeah. And that creates that solid belief. And then as you step up every level, it's like, oh, what's possible now? What's possible now? So it's just taking one step at a time and not trying to take step 10 before you've taken step one. Completely agree yeah. with that, mate. So what, what obviously when, when people get to that stage, let's just say they've, they've built up this ladder and they're at that stage where they're looking to sell their first $5,000 a pound program. How would you say, how would you say is the best way for them to find and attract the right kind of clients that can pay that kind of money? So I always say the sales process starts way before the sales call, right? And that starts with you. It starts with your self image. It starts with your own personal standards and your own values. Yep. You know, if you're somebody who's getting wasted at the weekends and you're partying all the time, you know, you look scruffy, you've not got nice um, attire on and, and you don't present yourself in a way which is perceived to be somebody who's confident, is going somewhere, who knows what they're doing. And you can't expect people to have the same um, beliefs about you. So it's, the first thing is, be what you want to attract. If you're wanting to sell premium pr price or higher price or higher value programs, 
you have to be premium yourself. So look at your mindset around what you buy. Do you go down to the local pound store and buy your shampoo to save 50p? Or do you, do you <laughs> order it online because you're saving your time? And yeah, it costs you two pounds more, but it's a mindset that you're setting yourself. It's the same with everything that I buy. If I'm buying some sunglasses, I'll buy the best pair that I can. If I'm buying a, a laptop bag, I get the four or $500 laptop bag. Why is that? It's because I know that's going to last me for 10 years. But more importantly, I'm building up my standards and my values around every area of my life from um, what I invested in coaching through down to my toothbrush. You know, I'm not going to buy the $2 toothbrush. I'm going to buy the, the vibrating or whistling one because I know for 10 years that's going to serve me. So it's around built, raising your own personal standards. Yeah. Secondly, you're going to look at the world in a different way. <laughs> you're going to look at the world in, in terms of opportunity. You're going to look at the world in terms of contribution. Uh, you're going to remove this scarcity mindset around getting a deal, saving money, and all this kind of stuff around the same beliefs that these guys or these girls who want to invest at a high level have. They're looking at things or they're looking for people who are doing the best or who are offering the best services. And that comes from you being what you want to attract. So again, that's something in the marketplace which isn't really spoken about. And some people, some other fitness guru, coaches, whatever, might kill me for that, which I don't care. That's another story about being confident in yep. your own, you know, your own, your own methods. But yep. um, I always say, if you want to sell something to a high level, you've got to be good. You've got to be what you want to attract, and don't be scared to repel people who can't afford your services. If you're good enough. You should honor your own time and repel everybody who's not sharing the same values and the same beliefs that you do. 100% mate. That's, and the thing I'm loving about this is the feedback you're giving everyone here is it's not about the next fancy tactic. It's not about the big strategy. It's about you. It's about you as a person, you actually stepping up and stepping into a space that you've never stepped into before, which is scary, but you've got to take that first step and you've got to, like you say, bring your value up by actually investing in yourself at that level. And like you said, going about your, and not worrying about what you're buying and just buy the best of stuff. So you, to, you bring your level of value up. Completely agree with that. That's fucking amazing. Good feedback, man. Um, yeah, very- that's it. Values. Just, just to add, add to that, like people saying, well, how do you get to that stage where you can, you know, live or be what you want to attract? And it's that, like you just said there, taking that first step, you've got to lead. You can't acquire a five grand client and then start to invest that five grand <laughs> in yourself. You have to take the first step and you have to punt on yourself. Like I sold my car. I had a nice BMW sports car and all this, good, all this stuff. I was spending my money on really stuff that wasn't getting me where I wanted and yes. I said, right, I need to get some cash together. I was, I was doing well. It was coming in here and, I, and it was going out there and shit I didn't need. <laughs> so I just started to sell off everything that I didn't need. And when I bought something, I bought quality, but I got rid of all the crap that I didn't need in my life. And I got a, an old banger. Well, it's not an old banger. It was a, it was a Volkswagen Golf. cost me four grand, but I had no car payment. And the rest of the money I had, I was like, right, here we go. I've got the cash flow. I sold my iMac. I sold my leather jacket. I sold all sorts of crap. I got cash together to make to take that first step, and that's what I see people not willing to do. They'll they'll be going on two or three holidays a year, and they'll tell themselves they haven't got the cash to take that first step. So you've just got to look at where do I need to sacrifice to take that first step. Yeah, awesome. I definitely agree with that, mate, hundred percent. And it's really it's good. It's because it's going to open people's eyes to they actually have to look inside themselves rather than outside to actually make this a reality for themselves. So that is my message. It's what I live. It's what I preach, and it's fucking good to get that feedback. So so now that we've spoke a lot about the the sort of internal stuff and about stepping up and stepping your own values up and really looking at yourself first, your own self worth, your own self value, let's talk about the strategy side of things because it is important, but it's not the first thing. So like, obviously if somebody wants to attract the, the, the kind of client that pays big money, they have to look at themselves first, but how would they go about doing that strategy wise? Okay. So let's assume we've got everything else taken care of and we can start to look at the world in a slightly, through a slightly different lens. So now yeah. we're actually starting to observe what, re- what people are really asking us for and what people are really telling us. So organically through your existing social reach, there'll be clients 
there'll be three percent of your existing clients or your existing reach rather who will buy something from you you know this month these are the people who've not really seen somebody from you as yet a message or a trigger from you as yet which has given them an intrigue or a trigger to say what's this guy what's this girl all about so you have to understand your prospects better than they understand themselves so the, the kind of things that I share with my demographic, it's because I've been hanging around them for 10 years, right? I know all the pains. They tell me stuff. They don't tell the wives. I know their lifestyle. I am leading a similar lifestyle to them. I go to similar marketing events. I go to similar masterminds. I speak to these guys on the phone a lot and then we coaching calls. And through um, gaining experience with working with these guys, I'm able to track and get clear on what they're really asking for. So they might tell you that they want to lose some belly fat, but that's not really what they want, right? They want to get confident so they have great sex with the wife who's yep. um, on holiday this next week and the wife's kind of been checking out the hot guys down the beach because this guy over here for the last five years plus has been busting his ass and he's been eating crap and he's been searching for a sensation of pleasure yep. and his wife doesn't really want sex anymore right yeah. that's not what a lot, most people are finding right when they look at somebody's complaining that they have gained weight yeah 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 <laughs> that's a pick up from your knee from your demographic that's one of the you might not want to admit that to you right but you can you can get that over time through subliminal messaging right you, you know and there's other things that you can look at so the first thing is really understand what your prospects really want what the prospects are really struggling with and it might be difficult initially to figure that out, right? If it's a new demographic. So this is where Facebook groups come in. This is where, uh, you know, just giving away um, a couple of, let's say, weeks of your coaching to work with somebody to really dive into trying to figure out what this person really wants. So that'll give you a bit of a starting point. Um, and once you really understand what they really want, so I would say write down the five main pain points of your yep. prospects, write those down, and then dissect each one two more layers deeper. So like the first one could be, I want to lose my belly fat. It's a busy guy. Well, why do you want to lose your belly fat? Right, because I don't I want to stop having sex with my T-shirt on of an evening. <laughs> this is the stuff which I, I'm quite harsh with the, the kind of stuff that I use because I need to really get pattern interrupted to my prospect space because these guys are, um, you know, they're busy. So I need to hit them hard sometimes. So why, why is that important to you? So it might be, well, I want to get closer to my wife again because we're not that close anymore and I know that I don't really you know, make much effort and I avoid intimacy because I don't feel comfortable in myself. These are real pain points that your prospects want. And when you understand to that level, pricing objections becomes not, it's not that it's not an issue. It's obviously got to be certain um, level of uncomfortable so they show up and they follow through. But... When you're helping them see that this pain that they're in right now is real and you're amplifying that pain because they don't want to admit that they're in this pain. Yep. And then you're helping them to live or to experience, well, what would this do for you if we solve this for you? So that's really how you're going to acquire. Yeah. In terms of tactics, that's how you're going to acquire clients at that level. But in terms of where you find them, it's all relative to your demographic. But in your social media organic presence, you'll find them already. You'll find a couple Yes. Just by doing that. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. That's, I'm a great believer in organic growth to start with because there's no better market research. There's none. Uh, you, you're you're getting vital feedback from the person there and then that's giving you this is my big problem. This is the problem below it. This is the problem. This is the problem. And you're getting that feedback to then give them that back in in content in the marketplace, but also beginning to understand how you can serve them better in your program so you can serve them at a higher level as well. So, yeah, I completely, completely agree with that, mate. And that's good that you've said that, yeah, it's consistency over time that gets you to this level. It's putting in the groundwork. It's laying the foundations. It's being patient, persistent, and consistent moving forward. So, yeah, it's, it's good that you're, you're, you're painting the picture of how simple it actually is. So, yeah, awesome. Um, well, that's it. You raised, you raised some really good point. Patience and persistence, man. You know, people are posting for seven days and they're, they're saying that this doesn't work. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you've got you to gotta get this done. This is part of, this is part of your, um, 
daily routine, right? It's going to yes. take a good month for you to change the beliefs and the behaviors of your demographic or your marketplace. Yep. So yeah, patience, great point there, Scott. Yeah, patience. And it's like most people are, they, they want, they want the success they want now. And instead of thinking, instead, like it's good thinking big picture, but I believe in why don't you think long and act short? Think long, act short, and just focus on the daily and weekly tasks that are going to get you a result. Must do yeah. tasks, just do them daily. They're simple and easy. Move forward. Awesome. So, like, let's just say we're at the stage where we've, we've overcome our beliefs. We're starting to, like, um, show up in the marketplace. We're creating a, we're positioning ourselves. We're creating a presence. We're becoming an expert. Um, how do we create a program? Like, what would, what would you say is the best way to actually create a program that you can sell at that level between five and, let's just say, 10 grand? Yeah, so firstly, we're going back to you should already be able to get fucking great results with this demographic. So if it's the lady who um, has got a young baby and she's struggled to get back into a pre-baby body, you should already know 99 times out of 100 how to get this lady exactly where she wants with predictability and sustainability, all right? So if I wanted to um, create a program for diabetics next week and I start talking about this kind of stuff, I know that I couldn't put something together that quick that would be worthy of high fees. Yeah, I could, I could put something together that's probably going to be better than a lot of what's out there because I'm experienced, but I would prefer to work with the demographic that I know I'm an expert in. So that wouldn't be something that I would obviously offer. So the first thing is offering something that you're really good at. Yes. And second, secondly, um, in terms of delivering your program online, there's various uh, methodologies that I use um, according to your demographics. So, for example, if it's a female um, and they've got young children or they've got children, then... They like a community environment where they're engaging and they're building rapport with other um, females, other people who are going through similar things to them. That could be a great place where you could deliver a weekly training um, on a specific subject and then give them insight into what's coming next week. So everybody's working together at the same time and growing at the same time. That could work well for the females of that demographic. You know I mean? The guys who I work with, they don't have time for all that stuff. They don't want to talk to Joe and... and this is the guy and, and share what's going on in the world. We want to get down to the nitty gritty. They want to keep the cognitive brain power minimal and they want specific actionable content that they can implement every seven days. I'll go through a breakthrough call with them every week to make sure that they're clear on what they're going to do and, and where, they, where they're doing well, where they need to step up and make that simple for them that they can take away. So that's how I deliver that process for these, these, these uh, guys who I work with. So I think you'll probably also um, find ways on how you want to work and how you want to live, right? So there's guys I know who are doing 24-7 access to them and Facebook groups have got hundreds of clients in there. That is my idea of a nightmare, but this guy loves it, right? So yeah. all sorts of things. For me, I don't want to be on coaching calls all day long, so I want to work with four clients at any one time. That's up to four hours work a week. Other than that, I can develop the time and improve myself and then offer trainings and give free content to make my life easier. So you've got to look at your outcome that you want to create for your own lifestyle. What does that look like? So this is where I made the mistake. So when I was traveling a lot, you know, nine different countries a year, I'd have to stop. I'd be in Rome, I'd want to go and see something and I'd be like, fuck, I've got a call at three o'clock. I need to go and find Wi-Fi. I need to stop what I'm doing. Yep. And then I'd go, my girlfriend would be there, you know, doing her own thing, and I'd be missing out on some of the trip. And I have 15 coaching calls a week like that. So my income exploded, but also I was not following the path which was giving me what I wanted. I was actually getting back to my old beliefs of, yep. I have to be busy. So there's all sorts <laughs> of things around that. So yeah. What, get clear on what, what your lifestyle is going to look like, say, a year from now, and then reverse engineer it. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's, yeah, it's really good feedback that you're saying that it's not about what everyone else is, else is doing out there. Oh, this person's doing that. Let's follow. It's about, now. what do I want to achieve? And if, you, if doing coaching calls all day long is what you want to do, then do that. But 
can guarantee that it's freedom that you want. It's not the, the, the busy lifestyle, it's the freedom. So yeah, and I, it's good that you gave the feedback as well. As what I took from that as well was it's not, it's not hard. It, just keep it simple. People are not buying um, all the Facebook group and the next, uh, the bonus and the bonus and this. They're buying the fucking result. Yeah. So yeah. if you can have a community for the women like you were talking about and it gets them a result, awesome. If you're just delivering content via email, awesome. It's entirely up to you the way you want to deliver that as long as you can get them from A to B. Pain, pain to aspiration. Yeah. That's it, man. It's uh, the last, you'll probably see this yourself, all these Facebook groups going on with online coaching and this kind of stuff. Everybody's hung up on what do I need to include for this? What do I need yeah. to include for that? And it doesn't matter. Literally, not one of my, my clients ever asked me what they get. They just <laughs> yeah. know that. They just know that. They've seen the results. They're like, fucking hell, how did, you know, what did you do? And I take them through the process of this is what, this is the process that I need to help you go through to, to enable you to implement this, this new way that you're going to live. Yeah. And then they start to just take a step back and go, okay, let's go. Yep. They don't need to know what the hell I'm going to give them. Yep. Some people like to know a bit of insight um, in, into that, but you just made a great point. The features of the program is not what you should be selling your program on. Yep. It's the results. Yeah. It's the outcome. It's showing them that they can come. You're the bridge to get them from A to B. So that, that would be the last piece of the puzzle, obviously. If someone, let's just say someone came from the offline and they're starting to sell and they're coming up the ladder and maybe they're selling at a thousand and they're feeling comfortable with that. And then they're, maybe they were stepping up to sell it, say five thousand. Like obviously there's that's, that's a jump and they're going to be nervous. So how would you say is the, the best way to actually close sales and actually allow yourself to step up to that level to then be comfortable asking for that kind of money? <clears throat> yes, it's a good question. Mostly it comes down to your belief in what value you're giving the marketplace. So for the time, energy, effort, the expertise, the length of time that you've been developing your skill sets and how good you are at helping your prospects get these outcomes. Yep. If you're good, if you know how to, do, how to solve these problems for people, then you've got no fear or you shouldn't have, you should have less fear around selling or asking people um, for what your worth is. So that's a good point. So I would say get... Um, Get, get confident or get comfortable with not being afraid to charge what you're worth. Um, now, there's this crazy belief in the fitness industry that, oh, I just do it to help people. I want to help people. Well, set up a charity, you know, open a dog shelter, do what you want. Set up a charity. If you want to help people, it's your duty to be fucking good and mm. give out, like, the, the free content that I give out is better than what a lot of people are charging for because I've got so much time and and clarity to provide free content because yep. I'm serving at a high level that I'm able to give out a lot of free content. So rather than charge people peanuts, I give it them for free. Yep. And then I'm speaking <laughs> to my demographic, right? So there's, there's a couple of controversial um, conversations I have with a few other, um, let's call them fit, fit, fit pro coaches or whatever you want to call them. And they really don't, don't like me speaking this message around You've got to be premium. You know, we're selling a luxury service. We're selling, um, pe we're selling a life that people don't have access to, which is a version of their life that they're feeling amazing in. And if you're a, if you're a great coach, then you deserve to get paid top dollar for that. Um, so remember, just yeah, just remember the outcomes that you're helping these people get, and. The more that these people can invest or raise the value in this area of their life, the better results they're going to get. So by you charging these people less money, by you lowering the standards in this area of their life, you're actually going to hurt them because they're less likely to follow through. They're less likely to raise the standards in this area of their life. So that's a good message to finish off with, really, which is you're helping people to raise the standard of this area of their life. They're already spending this money on something, and it ain't themselves. So help them to raise their values in this area of life and you'll feel so good that you're helping these people show up every week that you'll feel good and happy that you're um, solving this problem rather than asking yourself this question will we pay this money yeah that just comes out 
confidence. Yeah, and for like uh, for me, it's about it's about the coach stepping into their servant leader role, and it, it's that if you're a leader, it's your role to actually you're doing the humanity a disservice, or you're doing your um, your target market a disservice if you're not actually taking them through the darkness and saying, well, do you know what? You don't want to live like this. You want to live like this. So this is the step you've got to take. It's your duty to coach them through that. And, and uh, what, a lot of, what I find a lot of people do is they put too much pressure on themselves and making the money instead of actually going into a call with someone and actually just focusing on inspiring that person, serving that person, and just being like, I am doing everything in my power to make this person see that they can live that life and I am the bridge to get them there. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, it's that we could do another hour on this conversation. <laughs> alone, right? So, it's, it's a deep, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to simplify in a few, few minutes, but it's a yeah, really yeah. deep, um, it's a really deep area when we're looking at how is, the, how is it, how's the fit pro justifying his services for 5k to somebody? And it comes down to your demographics, beliefs, and values, and how you get them to align their values and standards with yours. Yeah. But also, how good you are as a coach. You know, people are not going to pay this kind of money for a workout plan, right? Or a food plan, or or um, a, a live Skype session, which you know you take them through um, a metabolic workout. People are not going to pay that kind of money for that. What they're going to pay for is access to a coach who is going to help them break through the bullshit and implement all the stuff that they need to get them the results. Um, so yeah, developing your skills as a coach is really how you get a lot more confidence um, in, your, in yourselves really. So confidence is a big, is a big one. Mm. Awesome, man. That's awesome. That's giving people amazing value. But before we actually we, we wrap up, I just want to allow everyone just to know you better. So like a question I want to ask you is, like, obviously I believe every entrepreneur is on a mission. So what is your mission? What, what, can you just tell everyone what you're out to do? Yeah. And why, what, why you're doing what you're doing and why you're serving the world in this kind of way, just so we can understand more about so you. So firstly, um, this is a message that we need to get better at, I guess, which is you've got to serve yourself first. So while I was serving everybody else, yeah, I had the, had the cash flow coming in, but then I was blowing down shit to give myself this sensation of, right, this is why I'm doing it. I've got nice stuff. But really, I wanted freedom. I wanted to create experiences um, that I could look back on and be like, wow, I've lived three lives, three lives in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get, get comfortable with, get, get feeling okay that you have to serve yourself first. And for me, that is creating a lifestyle which my business fits into. So I don't feel like I've got to do it if I don't want to do it. I don't feel like I've got this huge commitment to everybody else. A commitment to myself was the first thing. So then the second thing is there was a lot of guys out there who – we're either on the verge of dropping dead with a heart attack, going on to the empty um, castles that they've acquired because the society has told them this is success. You've got a shit ton of money coming in, but your health screwed. You don't see your children. You, your wife doesn't know who you are. And I wanted to help these guys to change this culture and business around sabotage, sabotaging themselves, sabotaging what's important because society has told them this is this is success. So I'm still fighting this battle, right? I've got a magazine called Fit Entrepreneur Magazine, which I had to bring out to try and help this marketplace learn more about sabotage, not sabotage, um, hustle. Hustling your face off is just absolute bull bullshit. <laughs> uh, love it, man. Love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, I wanted to change this culture of, of the hustle mentality um, in business. And then from there, moving this into the fitness professionals realm there's a lot of fit pros out there who you know they're being qualified in two days you know there's there's group on certificates now out there for 39 pounds and you're a trainer yep. so raising the standards of the fitness industry is another passion of mine which is helping people realize that you know you, you want to go into a gym and you want to you know text people on your phone and count out the reps that's cool but that isn't really helping people out and i wanted to help the fitness marketplace raise its standards so we can take the average income from 12 to 14K a year, which is what a lot of these guys are worth because let's face it, they glorify treadmill cleaners, so they need to raise the game. Yep. So secondly, helping the guys who are delivering great stuff. There's a lot of great trainers out there. There's trainers out there better than me, and they're not getting paid what they're worth. So that was another thing I wanted to help these guys out with. Awesome, mate. That's awesome. 
Um, one more question yeah. before we go and wrap up, mate. One more question. I need to ask this one. This is my favorite question. Um, okay. Like, obviously, I believe that the number one thing that people, we've touched on a little bit, but I want to go deeper. Um, people look past the number one thing or they don't even open their eyes to it. And that's like energy and human consciousness. So can you give your view on this? Like, what's your view on how important your energy and the human consciousness and just like your view on the world is to actually become as successful as you want to become? Well, I tell you, this is a subject I'm, I'm really intrigued about. I have conversations with brain scientists about this who are my clients, and then we go off for two hours on a conversation about the brain. <laughs> <laughs> now... Um, Let's touch on energy quick. So energy is our most important commodity because our time, what we're able to do with our time is only relative to how much energy and focus we have. So this is why I always say, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Does it really matter? When you're 85, are you going to look back at this and say, oh yeah, I remember that problem? No. So don't, don't waste your energy on your problems. Don't focus on what you've not got. Focus on being grateful for where you're at. And, you know, we live like kings in our in our world and we don't even realize it. Yep, yep. <laughs> so setting your energy by looking at the world through a perspective of gratitude and through a, one of opportunity. Yep. That's how you're going to see your energy. That's how I'm mostly happy. You know, I've watched my dad pass away in front of me, struggling with lung disease. I've done all sorts of crazy shit. I had to deal with drug dealers and all this kind of stuff with family members giving me stress. And then you've got to look at why, why am I so happy all the time? It's because I look at the world and, you know, I've got trees in my back garden, the, the sun shining today. You have to focus on what you're grateful for. Yes. So that's how you can protect your energy, right? Secondly, um, what was the next question? Was it about... The human consciousness. Consciousness, yeah. Yeah. So most of us are like, most of us are not even aware of what consciousness is. Yep. How to stop and, and be present and... Um, how to gain control over how you see things. You know, we'll walk down the street. Two different people can walk down the street and have a totally different experience. One person can be looking down at the floor and be thinking about what's happened in the past or where they want to be in the future. And the other person could be looking up with good posture, <laughs> listening to the birds, listening to the birds flying by and, and appreciating the view and thinking, wow, life's amazing. So in terms of consciousness to a, a simple level, being aware, being present of what the hell's happening right now yes. is, is probably the biggest, biggest skill that you can have to radically and immediately improve your life and how happy you feel. Yes. Yeah. Live in the moment. Be present and live right here, right now. Not what was happening yesterday when you were on the toilet or what's happening two years down the line or tomorrow. Right here, right now. Like, I'm sitting here in Bali speaking to Darren Casey. Darren Casey's in Manchester speaking to Scott and we're here. I'm not thinking about what's happening tomorrow. We're both present. So, yeah. Now, a really simple way to explain it. And if the people watching this actually just take the two tips away and do that. Gratitude, present their life will change. It's that easy. 100%. Yeah, and it's, um, it's, it's called a gap. I don't know if you've heard of it explained like this. It's the gap. And it's from, if you imagine that this is now here, and then our brain just goes like this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Years at a time, people can just go into this gap and not be aware, and then bam, they can remember, oh, wow, well, yeah, I'm back <laughs> to the reality, right? You know, they're driving an autopilot. They, they go into work, yeah. and they're eating lunch, and they're coming home, and they're not even aware of that there's other things yeah. going on. So the gap, you know, my mind wanders as much as anybody's. Well, routine and discipline are things that I struggle with because I'm very creative. So my mind goes off all the time, but the rate that you can get it back is called the gap. And that's just a discipline, that's just a skill you learn. So the faster that you can get your mind back onto being present, you just start to catch yourself, you catch yourself faster. Yeah. So don't be worried about that. You, you know, your mind's always wandering and daydreaming. You just got to get it back. You'll get better at getting it back on track. Yeah. yeah. And that, that comes from daily work, practicing every day. And I like just conditioning your mind to do that. Like, oh, bring it back. Oh, bring it back. Oh, before you do it, you're present. You're present. Like, I'm a Gemini, right? So my head's like a bit like yours. Like, I'm really creative. So presence for me is a must. If I'm not present, then I'm all over the place because I'm really creative and I'm a Gemini. Yeah. So I've got two sides going crazy in here um but yeah man like that was awesome value mate i do really really fucking appreciate your time um and thanks for delivering this amazing value but 
last but not least, obviously, can you just tell everyone where you can, if they want to connect with you, where they can find you? So, yeah, if, they, if they're interested, they can reach out and, and speak to the man himself. Yeah, the best thing to do, I like to build relationships with, with people, you know, so just go over to Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash coach Darren Casey. Drop me a message in there, say hi. If, you've, if you want, you know, some nuggets of wisdom, I can send you some stuff as well. So, yeah, just... Just come and learn more about me there, and uh, if there's something that you kind of like the look of, then you can learn more there. Yeah, awesome, mate. That keeps it nice and simple. And I'll, when I publish this, I'll link everything below so everyone gets it nice and easy. Um, and if you want to reach out, reach out to him because this guy is full of wisdom, and he will take you to the next level. Anyway, thank you very much, Darren, for your time. Okay, and Scott, enjoy Bali. Yeah, see you all later. Enjoy. <laughs>